factors at molecular level which controls the biological sure. clock. Circadian rhythm, the most common biological clock, is controlled by an intricate network of molecular and cellular processes. The important factors governing circadian rhythms are suprachiasmatic nucleus, light, and molecular clockwork. Of which, suprachiasmatic nucleus is the central pacemaker of circadian rhythm. It is a group of cells which are located in hypothalamus above chi optic chiasma. Even when isolated from external time cues, external time cues, suprachiasmatic nucleus continues to generate rhythmic patterns, maintaining body's internal sense of time. Suprachiasmatic nucleus coordinates with various glands to produce hormones, which in their turn controls body temperature, sleep-wake cycle, and one of the most important hormones here is melatonin. Suprachiasmatic nucleus controls the peripheral clocks present in tissues and organs throughout the body. Light. Light is a potent environmental cue. It maintains body's internal cycle. Light brings its effects through suprachiasmatic nucleus. The light entrainment or photo entrainment is through the specialized cells present on the present in the retina of the eye, which are called as the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglionic cells. These cells are sensitive to light, but not involved in conscious vision. These cells detect changes in light levels, especially morning and evening, and send signals to suprachiasmatic nucleus. Morning light helps reset the body's clock and that's why exposure to natural light upon waking is recommended. When exposed to light, especially blue light, artificial light in the evenings from the electronic devices and screens, this can delay body can delay body's internal clock by disrupting the circadian rhythm, by disrupting the hormone production, especially melatonin. Molecular clock work at cellular level, circadian clock depends on molecular process involving genes, proteins, and a feedback loop. The core molecular components are clock chains, that is period and cryptochrome. Proteins such as BMAL1, that is brain and muscle aren't like protein 1, and clock circadian locomotor output cycles kaput proteins bind together form a complex and that complex in its turn binds to the promoter that is e box which is present on the dna their binding to e box will activate the transcription of period and cryptochrome g and then we have the important transcription translation feedback loop through which the genes and the proteins are controlling the circadian rhythm. This loop drives the expression of the genes and proteins which are associated with the circadian rhythm. So the molecular circadian clock is governed by two major genes which are called as period gene and the cryptochrome genes. Period genes code for period proteins such as period 1, 2 and 3. Cryptochrome gene codes for the cryptochrome proteins such as cryptochrome 1 and 2. The transcription of both these genes are controlled by the regulatory elements, clock and BMAL1. And the working of the clock genes is through a transcription translation feedback loop. This loop is core to the circadian molecular clock. We begin with the period and the cryptochrome genes getting transcribed. And the transcription is activated by the regulatory element BM. AL1 and clock complex binding to the promoter E box on the DNA. The transcription takes place in the nucleus 
and subsequently the translation in the cytoplasm, period and cryptochrome proteins are synthesized through translation. But the period and cryptochrome proteins level in the cytoplasm takes very long to accumulate and to reach optimum. That is because the period and cryptochrome protein translation involve multiple regulatory levels. So to, re to get the final product, final active period and cryptochrome protein, there are multiple regulatory levels and post-translation modification that they have to pass through. Due to which it takes a longer time for the proteins to accumulate in the cytoplasm. As the modified period and cryptochrome protein starts rising in the cytoplasm, some of which will move into the nucleus by nuclear translocation. Once inside the nucleus, the period and cryptochrome protein bind to the promoter region that is the E box. Their binding to the E box will deactivate further transcription of period and cryptochrome genes. Means period and cryptochrome proteins will put a negative feedback on their own production. And this uh, negative feedback will keep on continuing till the period and cryptochrome protein concentration which has accumulated in the cytoplasm does not degrade naturally and reach a lower level. Once the level of period and cryptochrome proteins reaches a lower level, the regulatory element so they will lose their control on the E box. So the lower level of period and cryptochrome losing their control on the E box will activate the regulatory elements that is BMAL1 and PROG to bind to the promoter and reactivate them. And thus the period and cryptochrome genes transcription will re-continue re or will continue further. This entire cycle remains constant in each individual with a typical 24 hours. With the accumulation of period and cryptochrome proteins in the cytoplasm, the circadian rhythm reaches the peak. So it is associated with a light cycle. And the degradation and further uh, negative feedback on it is associated with the dark cycle. The transcription translation feedback loop is a limit cycle. It will return to its normal trajectory even if it is disturbed. Any mutation in the genes involved in this particular loop can lead to sleep disorders such as familial advanced sleep phase, familial delayed sleep phase, and familial natural short sleep. To summarize the transcription translation feedback loop, we have the transcription of period and cryptochrome genes initiated by the binding of BMAL1 and clock complex onto the promoter E box on the DNA. Once the transcription begins in the nucleus and subsequent translation in the cytoplasm, the final product of period and cryptochrome proteins take very long to accumulate as they have very uh, they have multiple regulatory steps in translation and post-translation modification. Slowly they start accumulating in the cytoplasm till their, their level reaches a certain extent. At that time, some of them will move back to the nucleus and put a or will bind to the e-box, deactivating it further transcription. As no more period and cryptochrome proteins are formed, the ones which are already formed will definitely undergo its natural degradation. As they undergo their natural degradation, overall in the cell, the level of period and cryptochrome becomes lesser. And so they will lose their control or their uh, suppression of the e-box giving a chance to the regulatory elements BML1 and FLOR complex to rebind to the E-box and restart the transcription of period and cryptochrome chain and the cycle 
continues and the cycle syncs with the light dark phase.